solving simultaneous equations. That's all the question says. There are several ways of doing it. One of them is called by elimination, and that's the way I should go for here. To eliminate, you need to have the two numbers in front of the x, the same number, or the two numbers in front of the y, the same number. Sometimes there's an advantage in which way. In this case, no advantage whatsoever. So either, because 9 and 6 go into 18, I turn these both into 18s, or 2 and 5 go into 10, so I turn these both into 10s. As I say, there's no advantage whatsoever in the approach. So let's see what I'm going to do. Always label the equations and write down quite simply what you're doing. That tells the examiner I'm going to take this first equation and I'm going to multiply it by 2. So I've got two nines, two twos, and the two thirty ones that sometimes gets forgotten. So I've turned that into an 18. I need to turn the 6 into an 18, so I'll take hold of equation 2 and I'll treble it. 3 times 6, 3 times 5, and 3 times 28. Don't forget it's a calculated paper, so don't panic there. When you've got the two numbers the same, sometimes you add and sometimes you subtract. Now, how do you decide which? Well, try adding and see what happens. If you add these two lines together, you'll get 36 x well, that's not very good because you want things to disappear. So it can't be adding. So take away. So I'm going to do the top line and subtract the bottom line. 18x minus 18x. And this is where I'm going to have to be so careful. As soon as you see minus signs and you're subtracting, don't be the person to get it wrong. Minus 4 minus that minus 15. Minus 4 minus that minus 15 is actually going to be minus 4 plus 15, which will give you plus 11. I hope that's okay. Now, whether you use a calculator for that or not is up to you, but I really wouldn't. I'd rather think about it. Maybe I'd use a calculator for this if my brain was getting tired. 62, take away 84, minus 22. That gives us the answer of y equals 2. You then substitute that answer into either of your equations up here. Again, sometimes there's an advantage, but this time there isn't, so I'll just go for number 1. 9x minus 2y. Now again, let's be so careful with these minuses. Minus 2y when y itself is minus 2. It's minus 2 minus 2's which is plus 4, equals 31. The examiner's not been too generous with the signs on this one. Really keep you on your toes. Take 4 from that side. Take 4 from 31. We'll give you 27. Divide by 3. We'll give you... Sorry, divide by 9. A little bit careless there, I'm sorry. Divide by 9. We'll give you an answer of 27. Basically, one mark for your working out there, getting the numbers the same, and one mark for your answer. Of course, we could have eliminated the Y, and there's still been one mark for the working out, one mark for the answer, and again, one mark for the substitution, and one mark for the second answer. Simultaneous equations. Question 9. got a formula that says u squared equals p minus q over p multiplied by q. And we're told what p and q are. Calculate the paper. So this really is seeing, can you use that calculator? Now, the temptation would be to pick up the calculator straight away and start pressing buttons. Resist. Write down some working out. Quite simply, replace the P with the value of P, 
replace the Q with the value of Q. So that's P, and this is Q, and this is P, and this is Q. Now on purpose I've missed the signs out. The multiplication sign, with the multiplication sign you can multiply this in any order and get the same answer. But with the subtraction sign, or an addition sign, it does matter about these brackets with the calculator, making the calculator work that out and work that out and subtract the two answers. Now the use of the brackets on the calculator is very important. You can use them as often as you like. So on this particular question, let me move that over there a bit I think, I would recommend adding some more brackets. You can put in as many as you like. You've put in too many, well you can't put in too many. But you can certainly put in too few. So I'm going to put some brackets around here. And I'm also going to put some brackets around here. And in fact the calculator will do this in one go. Now not that I'm recommending this, I'm suggesting as I've said before, do it more than one way. So first off I'll do it like this. I'm literally going to type in what I've got here. So, open brackets, open brackets again, 4 multiplied by 10, do you know where the raised to power up button is, 10 raised to power 7, I'm going to have to start again because the angle I'm at, because see I pressed the brackets wrong, open brackets, open brackets again, that's better, 4 multiplied by 10, raised the power of 7, close that bracket and then open another bracket. But I forgot the minus sign didn't I? I can go back and put the minus sign in on this calculator. Minus. You're not going to believe it, I went back too far. I'm so sorry about this but it, it really is that easy to press the button wrong. Open brackets, 5, multiplied by 10, raised the power of 6. Believe it or believe it not, I didn't get the raised the power of button again. I'm watching the window now quite carefully to see if it comes up. Close brackets, close brackets again. I've literally typed it in. Now I'm going to do divided by, open brackets, 4 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of 7 multiplied by 5 times 10 raised to the power of 6 close brackets equals. Now unless I've done something really terrible, I've got it right. And the calculator says this. Well, it doesn't say anything because it can't talk. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It happens that that's right. But in the exam, I wouldn't stop there. I'd work out this top part, write it down, work out this bottom part, write it down, and do top divided by bottom. And if I got the same answer, I'd be feeling fairly confident. But I certainly would not press the buttons in one fashion and move on. It would be so silly to get a question wrong when it is purely at exercising. Can you press the buttons on the calculator? Now actually I haven't finished. And a lot of people, I'm sure, will move on to the next question before they realise they haven't finished. That is u squared. So in fact u itself is going to be the square root of that. So thankfully I've still got the window calculator, so I'm going to do square root of answer equals. And this time the calculator's got this piece of information. Lastly, 
I've got two other things to do. The answer is meant to be in standard form, and it's meant to be three significant figures. Well, let's do the three significant figures per part first. These are called the three significant figures because they're the first three figures I come across. Now let's write in standard form. The number part must be between 1 and 10. And the dot needs to be moved 1, 2, 3, 4 places. Now, I haven't actually got the answer. I usually work these out first and I've got the answer written down somewhere. But I haven't. So I really do hope I haven't made a mistake after all of that. But in the exam, I would really check that so carefully. 